Imagine waking up one morning to find that your entire life savings, which you stored in cash, are now worth less than a cup of coffee. Prices have skyrocketed so rapidly that your money becomes almost worthless overnight. This isn't a scene from a dystopian movie. It's the harsh reality of hyperinflation, a financial nightmare that has devastated economies and wiped out savings in countries like Zimbabwe, Venezuela, and Weimar Germany. Welcome to the Mechanics of Money, where we make sense of the most intriguing money questions. In this episode, we'll explore what happens when inflation spirals out of control, how it starts, what it does to economies, and why it's one of the most dangerous financial phenomena in the world. To understand what happens when inflation gets out of hand, we first need to grasp what inflation actually is. At its core, inflation is the rate at which the general level of prices for goods and services rises over time. Moderate inflation, say 2% annually, is considered normal and even healthy for a growing economy. It encourages spending and investment because people expect prices to rise gradually. But when inflation accelerates beyond control, it becomes hyperinflation. This is when prices can double or triple within days and the value of money plummets. The question is, how does inflation spiral into hyperinflation? It often begins with excessive money printing. Governments facing huge debts or economic crises start printing more money to pay off obligations. Initially, this might seem like a quick fix, but it quickly erodes confidence in the currency. As people see prices rising rapidly, they rush to spend their money before it loses even more value, fueling a vicious cycle. This loss of confidence is critical. Money is only valuable because people trust it. When that trust erodes, people start to look for alternative stores of value, like foreign currencies, gold, or barter. As demand for stable assets increases, the local currency's value drops even further. Take Zimbabwe in the late 2000s. The government printed money to fund its involvement in the Congo War and to cover budget deficits. Prices doubled every few hours at the peak of hyperinflation. The Zimbabwean dollar became so worthless that the government eventually abandoned it altogether, replacing it with foreign currencies like the US dollar and South African rand. This rapid devaluation causes prices to skyrocket, and the cycle continues. The more money is printed, the less it's worth, leading to even higher prices. It's a runaway train with no brakes. Another example is Germany. After World War I, Germany was faced with staggering reparations payments, leading the government to print more money. By November 1923, the US dollar was worth 4.2 trillion German marks. People would rush to buy goods before prices surged again, and bartering became more common as currency lost its value. It was a grim reality where money couldn't even buy you a loaf of bread. Now, picture the everyday life of someone living through hyperinflation. Their wages might be paid daily or even multiple times a day, but by the time they receive their paycheck, prices have already changed. A loaf of bread that cost a dollar yesterday might cost $10 today. People start to carry large sums of cash just to buy basic necessities. In Zimbabwe, at the height of hyperinflation, a single banknote worth 100 trillion Zimbabwean dollars was needed to buy a loaf of bread. Savings become meaningless, and people lose their life's work overnight. Businesses struggle to keep up with rapidly changing prices. Contracts become meaningless because the value of money fluctuates so wildly. Investment dries up, unemployment rises, and the economy spirals into chaos. In extreme cases, the currency itself collapses. Governments may attempt to introduce new denominations or currencies, but if the root causes aren't addressed, like excessive money printing and loss of confidence, hyperinflation can return. The economy becomes a shadow of its former self, with barter and foreign currencies becoming the norm. Venezuela, in the 2010s, provides a modern example. Years of economic mismanagement, falling oil prices, and excessive money printing led to hyperinflation rates exceeding 1 million percent annually. Basic goods like food and medicine became scarce, and the believer lost almost all its value. People resorted to using US dollars or cryptocurrencies to survive. Recovering from hyperinflation is a long, painful process. It often requires a complete overhaul of the monetary system, restoring confidence through fiscal discipline, and sometimes, international assistance. Countries like Germany after World War I faced hyperinflation, but through monetary reforms and economic stabilization, they managed to recover. In Zimbabwe, the government eventually abandoned its own currency, adopting foreign currencies for transactions. Venezuela has attempted various measures, but hyperinflation persists due to ongoing economic and political instability. The key lesson is that preventing hyperinflation is far easier than curing it. Sound fiscal policies, responsible money supply management, and maintaining public trust are essential. So, what exactly causes inflation to spiral into hyperinflation? It's often a combination of factors. 1. Excessive money printing without backing. 2. Loss of confidence in the government. 
government or central bank. 3. Political instability and economic mismanagement. 4. Decline in productivity or supply chain disruptions. 5. External shocks, such as sudden geopolitical events, like sanctions or war, which can cause supply chain disruptions and lead to scarcity-driven price hikes. A tangled web of these factors can ignite an inflationary spiral, hard to rein in once it gathers momentum. When these factors converge, the result can be a perfect storm, leading to hyperinflation. Looking at Zimbabwe and Venezuela, we see that hyperinflation isn't just about printing too much money. It's also about losing the trust of the people and the international community. Once that trust is gone, restoring it is a monumental challenge. These examples teach us that hyperinflation is a symptom of deeper issues, political instability, fiscal irresponsibility, and loss of confidence. It's not just about printing money, it's about the entire economic and social fabric unraveling. To prevent such disasters, central banks and governments must maintain disciplined monetary policies. This includes controlling the money supply, ensuring fiscal responsibility, and maintaining transparency to keep public trust intact. Modern economies like the United States and the Eurozone have safeguards in place, but even they aren't immune to inflation if policies go awry. The key is vigilance and responsible governance. Hyperinflation is a stark reminder of how fragile the trust in money truly is. When that trust erodes, the consequences can be devastating, wiping out savings, destabilizing societies, and plunging nations into chaos. It underscores the importance of sound economic policies and responsible management of a country's finances. Because ultimately, money is only as strong as the trust people place in it. Thanks for joining us on The Mechanics of Money. If you found value in exploring this topic, consider sharing your thoughts or questions in the comments below. Until next time.